Good morning, folks, and welcome to the New World Center. On behalf of the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, I'm really delighted to invite all of you to the, the day two uh, and first full day of this wonderful conference here we have hosted uh, here in Miami. Uh, first, I want to thank our colleagues at the Aspen Institute for bringing the climate conference here to Miami this year with the leadership we now enjoy in Miami Beach, Miami, uh, as well as the county of Miami-Dade. Uh, this conference really is a practical how-to conference, and you'll see that kind of sprinkled throughout today and the rest of this week. Um, my name is Kelly Jin, and I have the privilege of serving as Vice President for Communities and National Initiatives at the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation. I also want to take a moment to thank our co-sponsors, especially our co-title sponsor, The Related Group, with whom we at the Foundation have uh, had a long-standing relationship, uh, and we have collectively pledged to support this conference for the next uh, two years through 2024. admit to being a yet another New Yorker that has moved to Miami during the pandemic. I encourage all of you uh, New Englanders and, and Northeasterners to join me. Um, uh, but uh, uh, all jokes aside, I am a longtime champion of cities and have seen Miami over the last two years especially emerge as one of the ideals of the future American city. But that future is not guaranteed, as you'll hear about throughout the conference today. Much of what we know and what you'll see as Greater Miami was either carved out of the Everglades or built up out of the bay. The average elevation in Dade County is six feet, with a substantial portion of our population living just a stone's throw away from the water. Whether the Atlantic, Biscayne Bay, the Everglades, or the intricate and interconnected web of canals, canals uh, that you'll see here across the city. If anyone is vulnerable to rising sea levels, it's us to the tune of billions of dollars in waterfront real estate. But it's not just about property values. We face the risk of rising seas invading and salinating our drinking water. We bear the brunt of increasingly intense hurricanes, and we grapple with the pollution that flows into the fragile bay ecosystem. System. People come to Miami for many reasons, uh, many of these uh, of which I uh, certainly came to the city uh, last year because of our weather, our water, our culture, and our economy. And climate change unfortunately threatens all four. It's not an exaggeration to say climate change puts the very existence of this city that you'll get to walk around in uh, at risk. Knight Foundation is focused on the idea that informed and engaged communities are essential to an effective democracy. Our heritage is in local news, and many of our investments today focus on media, especially local digital journalism. That mission is at the core of our decision to sponsor this conference. As much as responding effectively to climate issues will require technical and economic solutions, it will be just as important and as difficult to change minds. We need not only good policies and good leaders in place, but also for those policies to be developed with and embraced by people throughout Miami and throughout the region. We need ways to help them understand the trade-offs and personally connect to the fact that our individual interests cannot be separated from the world around us. Holding the conference here and a place so at risk carries great symbolism, both of the dangers we face and of our optimism. And I am a glass half full kind of person. This is a conference that brings together those with deep climate knowledge and also those who understand that long-term action begins with short-term practical policy at the local level. We know that these problems are global, we know that these solutions must be international, and we also know that if we don't begin to walk the talk, we run the risk of delivering more hot air. Let's be mindful of the scale of the problem and the size of the opportunity. And as you go throughout the day, remember that we have to find ways to make the story understood. It will be quite the day. Uh, as a preview of the sessions later today, You'll be, hearing lead, you'll be hearing from leading architects and developers explain their approach to sustainable design. You'll hear an entrepreneur explain how he's turning buildings into Teslas. I'm particularly interested about this one. Uh, a Miami high school student talk about her big idea, 
Eric Schmidt in conversation with Al Roker on why he thinks tech is our greatest hope. The chief sustainability officers of Google and GM will outline the latest in corporate sustainability, and the head of the Bezos Earth Fund will discuss their philanthropy's role in the climate fight. Everyone participating today, whether in this room or online, came here to make a difference, and I say welcome, and you've got your work cut out for you. Let's focus on what to do now. As the saying goes, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Let's go plant some trees together. Thank you all for your time.